What if all we can do is think how scary a problem is? There's so much fear in it that it, it's almost untouchable. We can't deal with it. And then we're not ready to face it, and that's okay. And there's, there's some, some prep work to be done within ourselves, and that's okay. It's most important to know where we are, not to fight all our monsters at once. And that goes back to sort of what you said, the intention. You want to set an intention for the coaching. And if I'm picking too many things. Yeah. If there's something that a client really would like to do, but they are, if there's too much fear around it, that's not our step. Our work is to take steps that are super manageable and digestible and actionable, which builds the muscle for us to get to that big scary thing. Because as we walk closer to it, that mountain becomes more of a molehill. How does an artist avoid negative thinking and, and spiraling? You know, things are usually very extreme to artists. Mm -hmm. And so if, when things are going great, then we don't need to worry about it. But when things inevitably shift, uh, we can spiral down. I'm like, how do any of us avoid that? <laughs> oh, man. It's, it takes time and practice to be able to catch ourselves in the spiral. I mean, that's what partnering with a coach is mainly for, is to bring us away from that, the spiral. That's going to happen. I think there's, I think the first step is acceptance. This is how the brain works. This is how humans are. And there will be times when something's gonna set me off and I'm just gonna spiral. I accept that. That's part of my experience. Okay, what can I do about it? I accept that I'm going to be in a state like this one day. And what we can do about it is start to become interested, more interested in what, what we actually want to be focused on, where we actually want to be putting our energy. Thinking requires energy. And when I like to think of energy, it's, a, it's our most valuable asset. It's how we spend. How do you want to spend your energy? It's a spend, like money. You spend money, like time. What are you spending time on? What your energy, what thoughts are you putting energy into and kind of feeding that downward spiral? So some of the tools that I offer uh, support in pulling out of that, which takes, like I mentioned, acceptance of the human condition and takes surrender to what's true. And a question I love asking when a client is in the spiral, they become tortured. We, we do. We become tortured in, this, in the negative downward spiral is... Have you had enough of that? And sometimes the answer is no. And like a child at nap time, we have to let it tantrum out. And that's okay too. Until it tantrums out. And what I mean that, back to what I was talking about with energy, until it loses energy and faces entropy and it starts to just, you know, you hit some kind of, some version of rock bottom of that spiral. And then I go, have we had enough of that? And a client will say, yeah, this is so torturous. <laughs> this is, then we can start working from there. So sometimes you can't just, uh, we're not gonna say snap out of it, of course, but, but sometimes just, okay, just accept that it's there and we, we just get it out of our system. To be able to get to a level of being able to snap out of it, it takes a lot of work. And it takes a lot of practice, just like a professional musician who can just get on stage and play perfectly their violin. There was a lot of work and practice that came behind that moment. So if the moment is to snap out of it and get back to work, and we haven't mastered that yet, that's because there's a lot of uh, practice and preparation to do to get to that moment. So snapping out of it's not really important. That's a, just a level we can get to with a downward spiral, but letting it tantrum out and practicing the skills of, I once worked with an amazing fitness coach actually, and he was so deep. And one of the things he said, and I was getting back into shape and he kept saying like, whenever you notice you fell off the wagon, the only skill you're practicing is to get back on the wagon. He's like, I don't need you to lift heavier next week. I don't need you to run faster next week. I don't need, those aren't your gains right now. Your gain is, oh, I didn't go to the gym like I said I would, go tomorrow. Oh, I had a bad meal and I'm like messing up my diet plan. Wake up in the morning and have your breakfast. He's like, the only skill I want you practicing is getting back on the horse. 
And I did that for a month. That was the only thing I focused on. And it gets you really far. That's what gets you out of a spiral is realizing you don't need to be the best by next month. You don't need to produce your magnum opus next week. Sometimes you just need to remember to harness the skill of going, yeah, I got off track or yeah, I went into that spiral of negative thoughts. Okay, time to get back on my path. What is monkey mind? Monkey mind is a, it's a Buddhist term that relates to, uh, it refers to the uh, worry and doubt chatter, kind of the conversations that we have in our head. It's like a voice that swings from worry to doubt to worry to doubt. And it's the Buddhist term for our inner critic, um, our negativity bias, meaning we were born, all mammals are born with what's called a negativity bias, meaning our brain is wired to scan for danger, keeps us alive. And so the monkey mind is that voice, that conversation that says, maybe I shouldn't do it, maybe I'm not good enough, maybe I don't have what it takes, mom and dad want to prove, whatever, right? It's that voice. You should be an accountant, you went to school for this, you should be doing the shoulds, the worry, the doubt, that's monkey mind. It's just talking to us all day. And we want to know how to turn the dial down on that radio station. It's not going to go away. This is how we are designed. But we are able to manage it and turn the volume down on that and be like, okay, thanks for sharing. Anyway, what is it that I'm here to do? <laughs> oh, I'm really curious. I want to produce this film, low budget. I'm really curious who I could collaborate with, you know? And as you step up to your goal, that monkey mind will kind of swing in. Again, because there's something valuable on the other end and there's a risk between here and there. And monkey mind's like, oh, I shouldn't do it. You have a low budget. No one's going to watch it. You know what I mean? Like, whatever it's saying. That's what monkey mind is. And most 100% of the time, it's really not telling us anything valuable or worthy of our attention. <laughs>